So this is the story of how me became Cookie Monster, because we love cookies. <laughs> um, so Cookie Cutter is, the, is an open source um, project to create projects, basically. So you create a, a project template. Um, and this is, the, this is the story of how I became a member of the open source community. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. That is, I can't, how would you guys feel about that? So I can see my notes. <laughs> okay, so, so that's me. I've been um, breaking production systems since the turn of the century. Um, and I've seen a lot of languages come, uh, ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've, uh, I've written a lot of languages. Religious wars. This is not going well. Um, that's supposed to be a heart, and the eye's supposed to be a me, because we love CLIs. So Cookie Cutter is a, a CLI that lets you prepare a, a templated project and then generate new projects from that template with, with the information that you give it. A blank slide <coughs> that was intentional or there's no internet. <laughs> Damn it. OK, so this was, I, I love CLIs. Um, and right, I remember now. So because I've seen a lot of languages, um, developers tend to get quite personal about what programming language the tools they use are written in. Um, so even though you can, you know, there's an awesome tool. I think this was supposed to be Butterfly, which is a, a tool that, re that lets you log into your computer from a web browser. So it gives you a, a shell in a browser, so you never have to leave your browser. That's an awesome CLI tool. This one was, <laughs> this is, this is, we're going to have to use our imagination a little bit here. So it's, if you guys aren't enjoying it, it's on you. Okay? <laughs> this is, um, this one, yeah, this one, this one was a, um, <laughs> a command line Twitter client. That displays <laughs> that, yeah, so command line Twitter client. This is a journal taking note, all cool CLI tools. So it, um, yeah, so it integrates with OneNote and stuff. But basically, it spits your, your notes out into a text file where you can export it to JSON. This was another thing. Oh, wait, we have notes. OK, there we go. This is, this is going to be better. Butterfly web term. Oh wait, there's a thing. It's doing it. No. OK, that was Butterfly Web Term. That one was Rainbow Stream, which is a command line Twitter client. See, look, images in ASCII colored graphics. <laughs> um, journal we talked about, and YouTube download at the bottom there, which is pretty awesome. So you, you, you talk to people about these awesome CLIs, and then they ask you, so what language is it written in? And if it's not the language I love, then they don't, well, some of them don't want to use it. Um, and the point of that was, I forget. Oh, right, which was a, a lightning talk about how I learned to stop worrying and just use the CLI because I'm just a user and I'm actually not going to patch this code. <coughs> um, so cookie cutter. Ah, cookie cutter is. Damn it. I think this is all just the internet. Oh, there, it, right. So it's a, a command line utility that lets you create projects from templates. Um, it's, OK, why me love cookie cutter is because it makes it easy to start a new project. And if you're a programmer, you've all copied dashed R the file and then done some said magic and edited this file and committed it and then realized you missed some other references and then changed it. And the first, after the first three times that I did that, I never wanted to do it again. Um, so why I love hacking on Cookie Cutter is, which goes against the point <coughs> I just made, is that it's, it's written in Python. Um, and it also, because I'm pretty old, back in my day, we didn't have your fancy HTMLs and JavaScripts. 
So we used to write, you know, we'd write print stuff and Hello World stuff. So it takes me back to, you know, the days when it was just me in a terminal. Um, so cookie cutter is pretty simple. It, it involves um, command line I.O., asking the user for questions, stuff being typed in on a terminal, reading and writing and moving and manipulating files, talking to some APIs and pip installing and using some awesome modules. Um, as a programmer, I like it because it's all those things, well documented, well tested, um, and it has a, a cool open source community. Um, so why would you use Cookie Cutter? Um, in a previous day job, we had a microservice architecture, which involved a buttload of services and then a buttload of service clients for those services. And so that in involved a lot of little repos that were mostly the same. So that allowed, so Cookie Cutter in, in that scenario would allow you to easily roll out new services and at the same time give you a place to bring back improvements for the next iteration of the services. Um, in a current incarnation, um, I work for a lovely company called Intellection Software who have sponsored, kindly sponsored this talk. Um, and we run a, um, what's it again? <laughs> a market, re we run market research analysis. Um, so basically the setup is we have a, <laughs> we have, we have an, an installation for each client, um, which is pretty much um, a copy of, of the core product customized for that, for that client. So Cookie Cutter in that instance um, can help us to easily churn out new clients and as well as, well as um, push back improvements into the template. Um, okay, so here's the story. The story is I was tired of creating new projects by hand. So a Google later, I found Cookie Cutter um, and everything was good, but Okay, this is a brief segue in, and a, a small punt for an open source project of mine called Changes, which, um, which helps you to automate releasing a Python module. So it, um, it generates a change log for you from your commit messages, it pushes tags, it uploads your project to PyPy, it downloads it again and runs your tests and makes sure, make sure everything is cool. Um, so changes kind of handles the, the middle part of a project. When, when you're up and running and you're releasing new software, and what I wanted was for changes to take over the whole thing. So I wanted, I wanted changes, I wanted a start command in changes that would leverage Cookie Cutter to create a new project for me the way that changes likes it. So changes is a, a little opinionated about how your project should be set up. So I've got a, a changes-friendly cookie cutter template, um, and I want to programmatically call cookie cutter and pass it a bunch of junk and, and have it integrated into the workflow of changes. But cookie cutter can't do that. So the, the API doesn't give you, the, the API didn't give you um, an opportunity to pass in some data, and I wasn't going to type it in from the command line. Um, these are, oh, I had nice pictures here, guys. I had animation and, anyway. You can, yeah? What? And pass it around, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can actually, yeah. Well, I need the, okay, we can try that. But then I have to push. Okay. Does somebody want to juggle why I do this? Push later.
See, look, it's better on this computer. <laughs> Wait, I'm waiting for it to upload, and then I'll do it. Git push, 35%. OK, well, we'll we, can, we can come back. We can refresh and come back. Um, so, OK, so you're, you're new to our open source project. Um, the first thing you do as a good citizen is you search the issue list for your issue instead of just creating a new one. We're done. OK, let's try refresh. OK, and if I can get my speaker notes, then I will be super happy. OK, well, screw it. OK, let's take it from the top. That was just a dry run. OK. <laughs> yeah, see how me became Cookie Monster. It's all different. OK, this is the same <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is much better than the last one, right? <laughs> there's, even a, there's even a markdown joke there, because I couldn't figure out how to make it say C-sharp. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, I've recently written Unironic Ruby. So, um, Right, me love, me love CLIs because me love automation. And if, it's, if you can put it into a, um, a small command, it's much easier to automate. Well, it makes it possible to automate. And where is this thing? OK, you know what these are? These are like huge animated GIFs that don't load. OK, so this is the Twitter client I was talking about. So you never have to leave your terminal. Um, journal, YouTube downloader, proposed lightning talk. Right, cookie cutter. Um, right, so this is, cookie cutter is a, a reasonably small project, 1,500 <coughs> lines of code. Um, and it, it's, yeah, so that, I mean, that's kind of a feature. The, we make a conscious ep effort to keep the scope small and targeted. Um, we are inclusive from a technology point of view. We support Python 2 and 3 and Windows, which is pretty rare in Python modules. Um, we love it. Yes, starting a new project should be as easy as, as making a new Git branch. Um, Python, obviously, is a reason. Documented, right, this is one of my animated GIFs of the documentation. Um, it's got awesome code coverage, which is, which is a thing. And we have a really, we have a pretty good test to, to actual code ratio, about two to one. Um, the community is pretty newbie friendly. It's, it's got a reasonable amount of traction. We have about a thousand stars. So issues, which is, you know, so that's kind of like a teenager compared to the Django's and the HTT Pies that have like 20k stars. Um, so we get, we get some issues, people submit code, and we have some milestones. So some of the, some of the philosophy is we try to, we try to limit the scope in the, in the grand old tradition of the Unix way of doing one thing as well as you can. Um, and yeah, and then and then the way that you yeah, then you assemble all your your tiny sharp tools into a toolbox, and you compose them onion style to to make your life easier. So we like cookie cutter because it scratches my itches. Um, there's the there's the microservices architecture picture. This is what happened. They tell me. Um, yeah, we talked about that. Right. So this is my, this is my cookie cutter template um, for use with change, for use with changes. Um, and let's see if this demo works. It might be a little fast, but basically you point cookie cutter at a, at a template which could be a Git repo or a local file system. It's got a bunch of metadata that it prompts you for, like the name of the repo, a description. Um, it uses Ginger to 
search, basically search and replace your template with those values. Um, and it spits out a new one. So what I've done here is I've generated a new cookie cutter template. I've gone into it, made a virtual in virtual n. It's installing my requirements now, and it should be good to go at the end of it. We'll wait a few more minutes, seconds. Downloading. Okay, we'll come back to it. Or we'll we can do it. We can do it again. My itches again. Okay, we did the backstory. So this is changes. This is me. I made a new, a new repo called PyCon ZA 2014, um, kind of module squatting. Um, so this, the same module that I generated with the, the, from my cookie cutter template, I am now pushing a minor release of it. So essentially, you can you pass a flag to changes to tell it what kind of release this is, and it bumps your version. It generates a change log entry for you. It packages your it it builds tarball. It builds um, eggs and wheels. It uploads to PyPy. Then it downloads again and tries to install it. Um, yeah, we can maybe do a a live demo if we're feeling. Lucky. So, so this is like all good things. The my idea for this for the start feature started as a small shell script. Well, I have a small shell script that does it, um, but I want to write some code to integrate it into changes. Um, it's not you know this. It's not an empty threat, right? If anybody was ever a DBA, you know that like this has happened to some people. They've been replaced. Um, so. <laughs> So this is this is the main API into Cookie Cutter. Um, so it's a little small, but you pass it an input directory and and the template. So what I need here is I need to pass it my context from Changes. So Changes already Changes does some introspection and based on the name of your module and what's in your um, what's in your doc string in your module init file. Um, I wanted to push the, that information. So this is, OK, I'm going to stop talking about changes in a second. But this is um, another Vaporware feature, um, which we can kind of think of like Git flow for a module. So just wrapping, um, branching out into a feature branch and working on a project, and then coming back and releasing. OK, so back to the story. I wanted to make a change to Cookie Cutter. So how do you get involved in, a, in an open source project? You look at the issues. And if you have some OCD issues, you do some triage. Right? And, that, and really, if you want to break into an open source project, that is the, the number one way to do it. Like No open source maintainer appreciates anything as much as somebody going through their issue list and closing dupes and merging issues and making sense of stuff. Um, you review some code, so that's a you know I went through. So having gone through the issue list, I found maybe four or five, four or five partial implementations of what I wanted. Um, none of which you know they they all kind of had problems. Some didn't have tests. Some didn't have any documentation. Some were just dumb. So so. <laughs> So what I volunteered to do was to um, synthesize all these change requests into one change request that would do what I want, as well as um, as well as get me in the author's file. Um, so right, so I'm jumping ahead a little, but so so in getting into Cookie Cutter by doing some issue triage and reviewing people's code. And making the maintainer's life um, better, you can sometimes get the commit bit. And now that I have this bit, and now I must wield it with great responsibility. So extra context is is the feature. And and really, what we want to do is we want a way to inject um, an extra set of context into what Cookie Cutter uses to do the search and replace. 
Um, cookie cutter takes, so in your, in your cookie cutter template, you, sub, you create a, a JSON file that has a list of, of all the variables that your template supports, as well as some default values. So that's, that's one basis for, for the context dictionary. You can also, um, if you use it a lot, you don't want to type your name all the time, your email address doesn't change that much. So you can have a, a user-specific file with stuff that doesn't change very much. Um, so what we need is, is project context. So we have the, the default context from your home directory combined with the context from the template, and we want to add um, project config for the particular instance that we're talking about. Um, so let's take a look at my pull request, if we can do such a thing. Or not. Click. Come. I don't know computers, guys. OK, so this is my, we'll just go through it quickly. OK, so in an overview, I, I synthesized all these pull requests. Um, I wrote a bunch of code, and then I got some reviews. Um, a bunch of code, OK? So in, wait, let me find the stuff where they tell me what I did it, where I did it wrong. OK, so I got a. I got a reasonably um, thorough review, since it was quite a, big, quite a big pull request. Um, there was some encoding considerations around how we open files. Um, some cleverness that I introduced to increase coverage. Um, okay, yeah, I think you guys must look at this in your own time. It's quite a lot of stuff, <laughs> and it's not, it's not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay, so I got some things, and then I made some more changes, and yeah, so what, so these are, these are, these are some of the lessons out of this big pull request. Um, because my changes um, incorporated a lot of stuff, I got kind of carried away with improving the surrounding infrastructure. And in, in an open source project, like if you think that your day job context when you get interrupted by a boss is like a tough, you know, is an expensive thing, open source context where people get to hack on stuff for an hour on a weekend is even more expensive. So, so the rule is, you know, keep keep it small, because it it, it just it makes it far more likely to, to get in. Um, another thing, you know, my I added some doc strings and I added some prose documentation, but Cookie Cutter has a really strong documentation first ethos. So, you know, it's it's like documentation tests and documentation and unit tests are, are first class citizens of, of the project. Um, and keep focus. So I got kind of, you know, when I made a change that bumped coverage, I got excited, and then I wrote another test, and then I refactored something, and then it just made the, the div terrible to look at. So what ended up happening is the, the BFDL kind of went through commit by commit and went, yeah, okay, this is cool. No, this is out of context. You know, the, I don't understand this one. And she kind of cherry-picked apart my beautiful, huge pull request into something that went into master. Um, so is it summary time? What are we doing? On? I've done like, I feel like I've done two presentations. Kind of. <laughs> so the, the, three, the three things that I want to leave you with is use cookie cutter, because cookies. Um, be open source. Find find a find an open source project that you depend on that's of medium size, so that you can you can have some impact and you know triage some issues, review some other people's code, um, do it. And number three is automate all the things. 
Um, it kind of harkens back to John's talk right at the beginning, where he was talking about um, automation giving you confidence. Um, and that's kind of you know, the, the ability to take a small change and automatically push it from your computer to production systems, the, uh, that, ability, that ability gives you confidence. You know, so I'm, I'm confident that I can, if I push this change out and it breaks it, as long as it's small, I can push out another change quickly to fix it. And so that, that, keeps, you, that keeps you going. Um, and that's it. Ask me anything. I am a little early. 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes of questions. Ten minutes of questions. <laughs> oh, not yet. Wait, not, not yet? No, no, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Any questions? What the, we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, steps to create a, a new um, environment? Because you kind of went, that went really fast. It did you go know, fast. You use a couple of minutes to just, I presume you, you know the commands by heart. So you well, it's, it's really one command. Um, you. Right, so you, cookie cutter takes the name, takes a template as its, as its only, <laughs> as, as its main parameter. Um, yeah, so what was the question? That's it, yeah, cookie cutter so template so name. So if the, in terms of steps, do mm. you, are you creating something on GitHub first or PyPy first? Yes. Or are you doing it on your machine first? Where, where do you start? So, so A, there's a, there's a bunch of templates out there already. They're all kind of listed on the cookie cutter homepage. So there's, you know, everybody's particular favorite way of setting up a project. So there's there's Flask setups, there's there's Django setups, there's Django setups with nose tests, Django setups with PyTest, there's, you know, there's there's also other languages, right? Because it's just it's just a project template, so it's not, you know, the what the the template doesn't need to be Python, it's just a, a directory. So, so, you can, so usually what you do is you start with one that's closest to, to what you want, um, and then you fork and, and then tell Cookie Cutter to use that template. I mean, you can even create a local template on your machine without, you know, and then tell Cookie Cutter to use that template. Yeah. Is it straightforward to create this template? Um, it's reasonably straightforward. It's it's basically just a directory. So it's um I don't know where the slide is, but it's it's a so in the base in the base in the top level directory you've got a cookie cutter.json file that's got your variables. And then you've got a you can have you can embed ginger templates in file names and in directory names and in the contents of files. So anywhere where there's a, a ginger reference, cookie cutter searches and replaces. So you can, yeah, you can set it up any way you like. Any other questions? Can you juggle two laptops and a mobile phone at the same time? Not all of these are mine, <laughs> so that's a, a maybe. I could, but <laughs> you'll just have to trust me. All right, so no more. Can we thank Michael again? Cool. Thank you guys.